Eyewitness News is your local election headquarters. It is Super Tuesday. Good evening. I'm Shannon Heggie. And I'm Ted Nisi. Millions of Americans making their pick tonight for a Democratic presidential nominee. People in 14 states, including Massachusetts, are voting in the Democratic primary today, as well as in some places, Republican primaries. A third of the Democratic delegates are up for grabs. Polls on the East Coast began closing just a little over two hours ago. The last day to wrap up voting will be California later tonight around 11 o'clock. But some voters in Tennessee will have extra time. A judge ordered the state to keep polls open late after, of course, that deadly tornado ripped through the Nashville area. First results coming into our newsroom. Let's take a look. So here's a look at the Massachusetts presidential primary, the Democratic race there. Still a relatively small share of the uh, percentage in, but the big headline right here, of course, is Elizabeth Warren, Massachusetts senator in third place in her home state. And uh, Joe Biden competitive there where he hadn't been in the polls, a sign he might be surging. And do we have a look at the GOP results in Massachusetts as well? Of course, President Trump being challenged. Uh, oh, we still oh, have we still our Democratic <laughs> results here. I forgot we have, because uh, remember, these people dropped out so late in the last two cases that we didn't know that. You have Mike Bloomberg there in fourth place, and you saw Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg. And there's the GOP results. Donald Trump winning over former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld. You know, let's talk about that, though, because we said earlier, Ted, a lot of people do early voting. Mm -hmm. And if you were an early voter and you cast your vote for some of these candidates who've now dropped out of the race. That's a yeah, tough I mean, pill to if you, you saw those numbers with Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg in Massachusetts. Part of why they're on our screen tonight is because they're getting a measurable number of votes that could affect the results, and that's true all over the country. I mean, Minnesota, which is Amy Klobuchar's home state, is voting today. You have to think the early voters, uh, quite a few of them, might have cast a ballot for their senators. So that's the numbers that we're seeing right now. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what this means tonight for each of the major candidates. We start with Joe Biden. Let's take a look at Biden's campaign event happening right now in Los Angeles. We do have a live look here. Now, he's had a huge reversal of fortune in the last few days. You were talking about it earlier on our 530 broadcast with Mike Montecalvo and Caroline Goggin. And you talked about a lot of it coming from the endorsements of the candidates we just talked about dropping out of the race. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, he's in Los Angeles. California is the biggest delegate prize today. A whole lot of delegates there. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but it's the most by far. Texas after that. And they continue voting until 11 415 in California. Thank tag. you, Shan. See, you always, you always <laughs> underestimate how much of the political knowledge you bring. So, you know, Joe Biden is there, and, and I think we're going to be spending some time tonight talking about Joe Biden being surprisingly strong. He had been left all but for dead a week ago, his campaign, especially. He did so poorly in Iowa and New Hampshire and didn't win Nevada either. South Carolina turned it around for him, especially his deep support among black voters who make mm. up a majority electorate there. You saw that. So uh, it, it's just going to be interesting night to see whether Biden had enough time. That was only Saturday to really turn things around and do it in a lot of states. But there are some signs that, that he broke through despite only having a couple days to make good on that and those endorsements. Yeah. And uh, let's just before we keep talking about these delegates and everything, we want to toss to some uh, sound from candidate Biden earlier today. My message is people are not looking for revolution, they're looking for results. I have the most extensive, successful record of getting big things done and big things passed. And the next president of the United States on day one is going to have to stand before the whole world, know the leaders around the world, and, they, and know that they know him. Put to, back together are, in fact, the significant allies we've had that have been, are, are just, Trump is just trashing have a military commander who understands and supports our troops, as well as reunite this country. And I think I've, there are things I've done my whole career. You know, Ted, when we were talking earlier, you said uh, Joe Biden is kind of running as the regular guy. Can yes. you talk about that? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders, is he, he describes himself as a revolutionary. He's right. a democratic socialist. We've never had a self-proclaimed socialist get as far in a democratic nominating process, or Republican for that matter, uh, in the United States. And so Joe Biden's sort of pitching himself as the candidate of normalcy, kind of how politics was before people like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump tried to really blow up how things are done. And for a long time, it looked like that wasn't resonating, and now it really is. And I do want to ask the, our producers in the back, I don't know if we can scroll back in our prompter to some of the other states because we did have results coming in from some other places uh, we thought would be interesting to show. One uh, is Virginia, if we have that one available, if we go to the top of our list here. 
Okay, they're pulling that up for us. I'll just say, Shannon, since I know what's coming. <laughs> Joe Biden won Virginia tonight, and, and it was telling the networks called Virginia right off the top, which right. says he's won by enough in their own exit polling uh, to, to be clear to win the state. You see it there. Right now you have Joe Biden, 54% of the vote. Bernie Sanders well behind at 23. Elizabeth Warren at 11. And you have, this is almost the entire vote in Virginia. And then on the second stream there, Mike Bloomberg, he'd hope for Virginia. Gina Raimondo was actually supposed to go campaign for him in Virginia today, but canceled it because of the coronavirus. He's down at 10%. And then Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klomachar uh, still got some votes down there, even though they've jumped out of the race. And Virginia being one of the states, too, with a large uh, black voter population as well. So that helping right. Joe yep. Biden there. Um, do we have Vermont as well? The results from Vermont? We do right here. So Bernie Sanders, not surprisingly, coming out in Vermont with 52% right now, uh, and Biden with 22% here in Vermont. Elizabeth Warren kind of falling behind here, Ted. That's kind of the story tonight, too, right? That's one of the things we're going to see. And on the second screen there, we have Mike Bloomberg, 9%, and Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar in the back. I will say this is a good result for Bernie Sanders, obviously, winning his home state. Right. But uh, Bernie Sanders won Vermont last time with like 85% of the vote against uh, Hillary Clinton. So even tonight, he's a bit over 50, not taking anything away from him, but it's not it's as commanding a, a win as he had just four years ago against Hillary. Okay, uh, we also have North Carolina uh, results coming in. And too? this was another one I believe was called right off the top by the networks. And you see it there for Joe yep. Biden. Another he large uh, black voter population yes, here. Yes, down in the South. Now, this is a very low number. We have 2% of the vote in, but Joe Biden at 31%, Bernie Sanders a bit behind. Now, this, Caroline, see here, uh, Caroline, Shannon, in this You've case, been talking to both of us that's tonight, That's who I talked to at 5.30. <laughs> I apologize. That's uh, all right. Mike Bloomberg at 19% there. Again, very low number of votes in there, but, but you see... But still taking votes away. Exactly. First time we've seen now Elizabeth Warren on our second screen. She's down in fourth place, and then the other two uh, who've dropped out in the back. And in Alabama, that coming in right now... We're still waiting for those results up on the screen. Joe Biden, 65% mm -hmm. in Alabama to Bernie Sanders, 15% of the vote. Michael Bloomberg with 11%. And then on our second screen here, Elizabeth Warren, 6% in Alabama. So Zero for seeing, the other two, yeah. Yeah, you know, what are we seeing here? Because that's a good point, too, and, and we're going to get to the other candidates. But the wrench that Bloomberg is throwing in here and taking away those votes from the other candidates. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it is uh, a smaller wrench than they had feared just a few days ago in the Biden campaign. You know, M Mike Bloomberg's whole uh, thought process on this uh, election was Biden's going to collapse and then I will jump in with all this money and I will be able to be sort of the moderate candidate once Biden has fallen apart. Biden rose from the dead <laughs> effectively the other day. Let's take a look to it. Uh, we looked at Massachusetts earlier. Our other New England state voting today is Maine. I think we have that there. Joe Biden, this one too close to call. No winner yet up in Maine. 35% Biden, 33% wow. Sanders down at 15% Michael Bloomberg. I think if I'm reading that right, should have brought yes. my glasses in. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> 11% <laughs> <laughs> for Elizabeth Warren. And then you have the other candidates here who have obviously dropped out since. But again, we see the numbers from the early votes. Um, we were about to go into talking about uh, Bernie Sanders and what has happened between him and Biden and the lead Bernie Sanders had. What do you think happened there? Well, you know, Bernie Sanders came out so strong from the first three states. Uh, you could argue, looking at tonight's results so far, maybe almost too strong for his purposes because Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, th there are a lot of Democrats who don't want Bernie Sanders. They think he's too far to the left. They think he uh, is going to hurt the other Democrats on the ticket. And then, of course, he has his strong supporters who some of them say they won't vote for anyone but Bernie Sanders. He uh, came in in uh, he came in in Iowa, a close second to Pete Buttigieg. Uh, then he won New Hampshire narrowly. Then he did very well in Nevada. And you saw Democrats start to say, "Oh, Bernie Sanders could win this whole thing." But they almost got so concerned. Here's a look at his uh, event. We're going to hear from Bernie Sanders tonight up in Vermont. That uh, once Joe Biden went to South Carolina, you almost saw a panicked rush to get around Joe Biden to have a strong alternative to Bernie Sanders. Right, right. Now, of course, Massachusetts also involved in Super Tuesday. Um, Bernie Sanders was in Springfield, Mass. on Friday. He was in Boston, I believe, on Saturday. Yep. So really trying to come out strong in Massachusetts, where Elizabeth Warren, of course, was hoping to take her home state. Yeah, and as we saw earlier when we showed the results in Massachusetts, uh, Elizabeth Warren could come in third right now, which is very interesting. I think we have actually a little bit of sound from Bernie Sanders. Uh, we heard from him earlier today, still making his pitch that will be familiar to folks uh, for why he thinks he's the choice. 
We are putting together a multi-generational, multi-racial movement of people who are standing up for justice. And to beat Donald Trump, we are going to need to have the largest voter turnout in the history of this country. We need energy. We need excitement. I think our campaign is that campaign. And we have more results just coming in. Let's take a look. Oklahoma, we have those results coming in right now where Joe Biden is taking the lead in Oklahoma. And we also have results coming in from Colorado where Bernie Sanders has apparently taken the lead there, Ted. Yeah, um, and you know, those are two states. You know, you th you're reminded here, there we go. Oh, here we go There's in Colorado. Colorado. Okay, we have 0% in, but <laughs> <laughs> our understanding is the networks have called it. Associated, Associated Press, Press, excuse me, has called it. We have luckily our trusty producer keeping track <laughs> of this for us while we're sitting out here gabbing. Uh, so we've no results to show you yet, but what the AP doesn't call it willy-nilly. They must have exit polling that shows that it's gonna, he's going to come out on top there. Okay. And, and are those a surprise, Ted, do you think? Not necessarily, I don't think. Uh, I think one thing that's interesting with primaries is states that don't matter for one party or the other in the general election do matter. So Oklahoma, not exactly a swing state, right? Mm. That, that is a reliably red Republican. Republican state, but there's plenty of delegates there for the candidate who does well. And you're seeing Joe Biden tonight. I saw one pundit point out today, you, they were expecting to see Joe Biden win all the red states voting today and Bernie Sanders win most of the blue states oh, voting today. But all the delegates are created equal, even if the state ends up going one way or the other in the fall. Right. Let's go back to talking about the Massachusetts uh, race. We were talking about Elizabeth Warren and our reporter, Steph Machado, was in Massachusetts. Uh, again, this is a look at the numbers right now. 32 percent yeah. uh, Joe Biden, 28 percent Bernie Sanders. This is 11 percent uh, in right now. And then 23 percent for Elizabeth and, Warren. You know, uh, we, we switched over. We're now at uh, Michael Bloomberg at 11 percent and then the two dropouts uh, further down. I mean, that number for Elizabeth Warren, I don't know if we can take that graphic again to show the Elizabeth Warren number, but to be in right now, there we go, third place and not a super close third place. Again, yeah. it's only 11 percent of the vote, but 32 percent Biden, 28 percent Sanders, 21 percent for Elizabeth Warren in her home state. But I was thinking, Shannon, I wasn't shocked because I saw so many uh, Democrats not rushing to endorse her even in Massachusetts. Yeah, and uh, as I was saying earlier, I would just news reporter Steph Machado was in Massachusetts. She was tracking this all day long. Let's take a look at what she found out from New Bedford. Ted and Shannon, Elizabeth Warren is not in Massachusetts tonight taking in the returns. Instead, she decided to head to Michigan for a rally in Detroit, not a Super Tuesday state. That state votes next week. Here's a little bit of what she said at a rally there earlier this evening. And I will work every single day to make sure that this country is living its values. I will do my best as president to make you proud of the United States of America in all of our dealings. And Warren was in Cambridge this morning casting her own ballot. She told reporters not to read too much into the fact that she was leaving the state and not taking in the election returns in her home state as Bernie Sanders did in Vermont. Now, of course, Warren is hoping she wins the state over Sanders, who is expected to do well here in Massachusetts. He's pushed hard for the state. He campaigned in Springfield on Friday, in Boston on Saturday. Now, we've been in New Bedford uh, most of the day today, and we haven't seen a ton of campaigning going on. I went, I've actually been at this polling place for the last three elections here in Massachusetts. Four years ago, we had Bill Clinton campaigning here. Two years ago, there were tons of people for the midterms um, with their campaign signs all day long at the polls. We've seen very little campaigning um, in New Bedford today on this quieter Super Tuesday here in Massachusetts, but we'll wait and see how that reflects in the turnout and the results. Back to you guys. Interesting, too, that it was so quiet. Yes. Steph was mentioning that to me all day because we're always uh, keeping in touch on elections. And, you know, again, as I said, it was surprising to see how few Democrats uh, were backing Elizabeth Warren. Plenty were. I don't want to take that away from her. But right. uh, we, among the local mayors in our market, I'll just point out, our, our TV region, uh, New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell did endorse Elizabeth Warren, but only, like, in the last two weeks. I yeah. texted his spokesman one day. He said, oh, he just decided on Warren. <laughs> um, uh, Fall River Mayor Paul Coogan isn't backing anybody. He stayed neutral. Attleboro Mayor Paul Harrow, he went with Joe Biden. Um, so these, the Mayor Harrow going against his home state senator, just a sign that the 
her roots and loyalty among the other elected Democrats are not as deep as you sometimes see with, with a statewide elected and official. And maybe the excitement wasn't even there. I mean, when you hear about it being so quiet, I wonder if that would allude to what was going to happen later today and, and the results that were coming in. And we touched on it earlier, but also um, talking about Bloomberg. And mm. he, this is the first time he's actually appearing Yes, because he on skipped all those early states, exactly. Right, so are we going to see him kind of taking away those essential votes from the front runners here? We thought that, but um, I think <laughs> I talked to one uh, person uh, who's working on the Bloomberg campaign who said our campaign was going great till Mike Bloomberg was out there. Uh, you know, those debates were brutal for Mike Bloomberg. He got delayed uh, by Elizabeth Specifically Warren. Specifically by Elizabeth yes. Warren, yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, we were talking earlier, Shannon, about the fact that Elizabeth Warren inadvertently seems to have helped Joe Biden by destroying, or destroying might be strong, but very much harming the other moderate option uh, with a ton of money, Mike Bloomberg, which meant that a lot of Democrats who had been very interested in Bloomberg were writing him off and saying, this guy, the debates didn't go well, this is not mm. the candidate for us, and got a second look for Joe Biden, who seems to really be capitalizing on that So it kind of backfired today. on Elizabeth Warren exactly. there, maybe. Exactly. All right, and we have some, I'm sorry, say that one more time, Sarah? Oh, gotcha. Okay, so Bloomberg spoke today, I think, about, you know, because people are asking Joe, uh, Joe, asking Mike Bloomberg, why are you still in this race, and are you going to actually hurt the moderates overall by taking votes, as you said, from Joe Biden? Okay. And he gave, I think he gave his rationale earlier today. <laughs> Let's listen. <laughs> I don't know whether you're going to win any. You, you don't have to win states, you have to win delegates. And I think what happens here is nobody gets a majority. If the best, somebody will have a plurality. By definition, somebody will have a plurality. And then you go to a convention, and then we'll see what happens. Do you want a contested convention? I, I, well, I don't think that I can win any other ways. I have no expectations for today. It'll be what it'll be today. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> not the sound of someone looking for a big victory night, which, again, you know, people might say, well, you know, it is what it is. His whole campaign was premised on skip those four early states. Spend, he spent half a, mil, half a billion dollars of his own fortune on those TV ads everyone's been seeing. As you say, they're everywhere. And the TV ads, you have to give them credit, are good ads. Most people think they're solid ads, but that's what happens when you're, it's sort of like a Wizard of Oz thing where, you know, once the man behind the curtain was brought out on that debate stage, it, it just didn't go well for him. I think that's universally agreed upon. And so now he's talking about a contested convention. The same thing Elizabeth Warren has said to people who say, why are you still in this when you're falling so far behind? saying, well, you never know. If nobody has a majority, maybe they'll look for someone else, um, which is why Joe Biden having a strong night could be very important for him. Uh, and I, I shouldn't be writing off Bernie Sanders. You never know. But it does seem like Joe Biden's uh, resurgence is, is a real phenomenon tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take another look at the numbers. Again, 14 states are uh, voting in Super Tuesday, including Massachusetts. Over 1,300 delegates up for grabs. And here's Massachusetts coming in right now, uh, still 11 percent. Uh, coming in right now. So 32% for Joe Biden, 28% for Bernie Sanders, and 23% for Elizabeth Warren in her home state. And then again, we have 11% for Mike Bloomberg here. And the other two candidates, obviously, we talked about early voting, those numbers coming in for people who voted for them before they dropped out. And I think we did want to remind people we have a few other elections today. I don't know if we have uh, that information we can scroll to in our thing, because while it is Super Tuesday in Massachusetts, right. uh, we had votes in Providence and in Taunton and in uh, Central Falls as well. Um, I don't know if that's going to come up for me, but uh, in Taunton, they were electing a Democratic candidate to run for Shauna O'Connell, the new mayor, her old seat in the state legislature. Uh, in Providence, the Ward 1 City Council uh, race is there. Oh, I think we now we now have it up. So we'll go through it the way it was originally written. <laughs> <laughs> so voters in Taunton and Easton, which I was just talking about, are voting on two candidates, which should advance at a special election for state rep. Three of them are running for the seat, as I said, previously held by Mayor O'Connell, who became mayor just a few months ago. Candidates are Carol Doherty and Muzamil Nazir and Republican Kelly Dooner. We're still waiting for results from that matchup. The top two vote getters will uh, compete, excuse me, the, the Democratic winner, and then the Republican will compete at the end of the month in the special election. And then voters in Providence also headed to the polls today to cast ballots in the race for vacant Ward 1 city council seat. John Gonsalves is tonight's winner. We did send out a push alert about that, earning 700 eight votes compared to 286 for Nick Ciccatelli. These are uh, unofficial results. Anthony Santuri earning 194 votes. Now, this seat was left empty because Seth Yurden, who previously held the position, resigned from the council earlier this year. 
And uh, let's turn now back to the Democratic presidential primary. We do have some new numbers just in our newsroom. This is Alabama, 2%, only 2% reporting already called wow. for Joe Biden with 62% of the vote. Uh, just a dominating performance. You see there a place where Mike Bloomberg actually is tied with him. Elizabeth Warren down at 6% and then the two who dropped out. I mean, again, Joe Biden just very strong across the South today. What does it say when you have 2% and, and mm -hmm. they're already calling it? Yeah. Uh, Arkansas, 4% in. Joe Biden taking 26%, much closer here right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Sanders with 22% of the vote. And Michael Bloomberg with 20% of the this vote. This was actually a place he's put, spent some time in, Arkansas. You see Elizabeth Warren down at 11%, and then Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar in the back. But you do see those two, by the way, still getting some votes because yeah. they only just dropped out. Right. Uh, in California, 0% in so far. And you said, Ted, they, those <laughs> results don't come in until, what, 11 o'clock? 11 o'clock they'll close. And California... Uh, that's just a 415 we're delegate state. And California, I warn you, everyone, takes forever to count votes. <laughs> I don't expect we'll know that maybe for days, if not longer. But uh, California, at some point, will finish counting. And, and it matters, the count, because so many delegates are there. And speaking of California and Texas, because Texas has 228 uh, delegates, one thing that's interesting, if you look on our website, we have a really great article about um, the things to look out for while you're watching this tonight. And white voters make up less than half the population there. Latinos, 40%. And uh, Asian voters as well, 15% in California, which is really interesting to talk about when you look at Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and kind of the way they've been playing their campaigns. Yeah, right? I mean, demographics matter a lot in elections, and the Democratic Party is, is you know, you've seen sort of the the uh, Republican Party has started to more and more dominate among white voters in elections, mm. which and the Democratic Party, by contrast, has become more and more a party of these diverse coalitions. And you've seen this time, last time Hillary Clinton generally did well across the board with non-white voters. This time, Bernie Sanders has done a decent job job organizing among Latinos. That's what really helped him in Nevada. But Joe Biden, as we keep talking about, has just dominated with African-American voters in the South. We're seeing that again tonight. Um, and then other groups also splitting in different ways. But you have to be talking in a Democratic primary to all those different groups. One of the reasons people to judge and Amy Klobuchar got out was because they showed no ability to win diverse votes. Almost all their support was coming from white voters. And that just is not how you get a majority in the Democratic Party. That's interesting, too. So what we're looking at, too, is more than uh, one third of the total available in the race to the Democratic Democratic presidential nomination. Can you talk about what this means going forward for, for people who still, I mean, I think it is a, a little confusing for a lot of people out there, the whole delegate Absolutely, count, all of yeah. this. Well, if you think about it, in the end, we talk about winning the nomination. Actually, what people are electing are delegates to the Democratic National Convention. Then those delegates take a vote on who should be the nominee. And of course, if they're pledged to a candidate, you know who they're going to vote for in advance. We know who the nominee is. So today is huge because, as you said, Shannon, over a third of uh, the delegates are being, will be, have been chosen by the end of today. So you've locked in a lot of the vote. Yes, two thirds are left, but you figure as those start to get split up, it gets harder and harder as more people get pledged to build up enough delegates to change things. That's why Bernie Sanders had hoped if he could really dominate Super Tuesday, maybe he would pull away and there would be no chance for a more moderate Democrat to catch up. And that's why Joe Biden's unexpected resurgence has been a bit of a challenge, I think, for him. Um, and we'll have to watch that closely as the results come in because those big states, I mean, you can see Joe Biden win a lot of states, but then if California comes in big for Bernie Sanders, it could wipe out the advantage Biden has. So we do need more information before we decide, you know, the full narrative for the night. It's really interesting watching the two of them, though, because two completely different mm -hmm. sides of the spectrum. And of course, President Trump on the completely mm -hmm. opposite side of the spectrum. So people who fall in the middle here, where are they going? Yeah, I think Joe Biden in the end has, you know, he's casting his campaign as, as the safe harbor for Democrats who just don't want Donald Trump to get another right. term. They aren't convinced. Clearly, there are a lot. Of, we've talked a lot about Democrats going to the left, AOC and all of that, mm -hmm. and that's a real phenomenon. But I think the results you're seeing between South Carolina and some of the states tonight show the whole Democratic Party has not swung as hard to the left as it might look on TV sometimes. Right. And so I think Joe Biden saying, look, I'm a safe place out. for kind of traditional Democrats. Mm -hmm. If you liked the Obama-Biden ticket, well, guess what? You have Biden again. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Try it again and, and see if you like it. All right. Let's take a little last look at the numbers before we uh, wrap this thing up. So we're going to start with Massachusetts. Again, this is with 13% uh, in now, 33% uh, coming in for Joe Biden, 28% for Bernie Sanders. Again, Elizabeth Warren in her home state only getting 21% here.
And then we have Michael Bloomberg with 11% of the vote. And uh, Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, of course, not in the race anymore, but early voting giving them those numbers. And on the Republican side, Donald Trump, no surprise, easily besting former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld with 88% of the vote. But you do still see a handful of Republican holdouts who aren't on the Trump train. And this is Virginia. We have 100% in. So this is called with Joe Biden winning Love in Virginia. Love how fast Virginia counts the vote. With over half of the vote, 53% voting for Joe Biden. Uh, Bernie Sanders with 23%. Elizabeth Warren with 11%. And Michael Bloomberg with 10% in Virginia. And then the other two down at the bottom there. That's right. Up next, we have Vermont. Bernie Sanders, as we talked about earlier, winning his home state, a contrast to Elizabeth Warren, unfortunately for her. He's got over half the vote, but as I said earlier, he got 85% last time. So this is actually a bit of a slip mm. uh, compared to how Sanders performed in his home state against Hillary. And then Michael Bloomberg at 9% and the two who dropped out down, down at the bottom, pulling a few votes here and there. In North Carolina, where 4% is in right now, 32% coming in for Joe Biden, 23% for Bernie Sanders, 18% for Michael Bloomberg there. This is one of the few, Ted, where we see Michael Bloomberg in third, mm -hmm. and Elizabeth Warren with 11%. Uh, bigger numbers here, ironically, for Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, who, of course, aren't in the Yeah, you see anymore. how that early voting uh, might have affected these different right. states. Alabama presidential primary, Joe Biden already declared the winner. Looks like he could be heading for a landslide that only 2% is in. 62% of the vote for Joe Biden, 14% for Bernie Sanders. Michael Bloomberg almost effectively tied with Bernie Sanders, again, with a small number of votes in. Elizabeth Warren behind the two of them, mm -hmm. uh, falling onto that screen, the third, second screen, the dreaded second screen uh, <laughs> at 6% there. And then this is Maine with 15% reporting. Uh, Joe Tight Biden, race Yeah, there. 35%. Uh, Bernie Sanders, 34%. And Elizabeth Warren in third there with 13% of the vote. And we go to the third screen, uh, Michael Bloomberg with 13%. And then you have the two dropouts there as well. Um, and up next, we have, I believe, Oklahoma. Yep, we have Joe Biden winning, declared the winner in Oklahoma with 36% of the vote. Again, not a red, not a blue state in the fall, but a place uh, where there's some delegates to be picked up. Bernie Sanders behind him at 24%, Mike Bloomberg at 15. Uh, and you know, we have to say, there's Elizabeth Warren getting only 13% you know, there, and then three and three for Pete and Amy. Uh, and then we go to Colorado here. It looks like we don't have any results yet. We don't have any results, although we do have a check mark under uh, Bernie Sanders. Has he been declared? He's been okay. declared the winner this in Colorado. This does confuse people. Exit polling is used. Clearly in the exit polls, he must look so dominant that the networks and the Associated Press say, you know what, we know he's going to win even though we don't have That's any That's why we have Ted here, folks, because he can explain <laughs> something like this. Why, but... To, to be clear, Bernie Sanders declared the winner in Oklahoma or in uh, Colorado. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, so honestly, it's been a long night ahead. We're going to keep tracking all of this and, of course, bring everyone the updates on Eyewitness News. But we're going to watch for Texas closing, California, huge number of delegates yep. there. And then, frankly, one of the things I'm watching most closely is can Elizabeth Warren get even to second place in her home state or will she be a... You know, an embarrassing Yeah, third. what will it mean for her going forward? Will she yeah, completely I mean, she only just got reelected to the Senate, uh, so presumably it doesn't say she's going to lose her next Senate run here, but but not. Uh, it's embarrassing for a campaign to have that kind of thing happen. I well, Eyewitness News Politics Editor Ted Nisi, as always, we so appreciate your expertise in this, and we will have live team coverage of Super Tuesday all night. Tune in to Eyewitness News at 10 on Fox Providence and at 11 over on WPRI 12 for the latest results on the Democratic presidential primary and as well as local elections. And I'll be in studio with Shannon and Mike to break down those results and let you know what it means for the Democratic race moving forward. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.